we yongero kuvumbula ku program eno vumbula nange Drake Sekeba ku WBS television kwoka mu myaka ejali kumwenda mu nkaga amawanga manji mu Africa gafuno buyambi yo Uganda yabachi uh, on the other hand you can have a lot of aid as happened in the 1960s because i know that certain countries in Africa got a lot of aid in the 1960s, but there was nothing, nothing that was there to show for it. So what is more important is the, is the vision. We should have, if we are, if we, even if we are to have aid, I wish you could introduce those words in your vocabulary. If we are to have aid, we should have vision-led aid. If you have got vision-led aid, then that aid is useful. Not aid led vision. I have a vision, somebody helps me to implement it. Rather than somebody bring aid and say and say, do what I want. And you think that you, you, you develop. No way. Uh, I don't want to give examples, uh, but I could give some. Like for instance, Congo, Congo DRC. They got a lot of aid in the 60s, but nothing. You can't show anything for, for, for that aid. Uh, so, therefore, uh, in my opinion, the primary responsibility is on, on, on these third world countries to... Bwabela mubi ofuzi, ebi intuvyo na tebuta ambula ngabu obiagala. Atera, joko miokuruwa mubu yinza, na haba antubata andika okukuo gerira ama fuku ure. Nechari ya chiru unji, mwetu tebacha achiraba. Uh, Nebata andika no kuita na ache marira. There has been really a lot of toxification. Telling lies about Uganda, about this, about... They even call our, our, our government a dictatorship. I have been seeing one of the... This is dictatorship that we are a dictatorship. I have not been talking much, but you know when I talk, you know, I demolish whatever rubbish has gone <laughs> So I really went and demolished much of that rubbish which had been planted among those uh, uh, uninformed Westerners. Uh, I, I, I was able to just explain. For instance, you hear, Corruption, corruption, corruption. I asked one of the people I was talking to, Mr. So-and-so. I don't want to mention who he was. Do you know the anatomy of corruption in Uganda? How can you talk about something when you don't know the anatomy of it? Who is in charge of, of fighting corruption in Uganda? Do you know? I never see anybody talking about that in your newspapers here. Now, according to our constitution, I think it is Article something, 160 something, 164 something. Uh, check it, check it for me. Send somebody to go to get us a. Uh, the constitution says clearly that. The job, the responsibility for public money and for contracts is with the permanent secretary. It is in the constitution at the national level here. In a district, it is the CAL, chief administrative officer. In a, in a town council, it is the town clerk. In a sub-county, it is the Gomorrah chief. These are, the, these are only four people in Uganda who, who, have, who, who have got authority over money in, in terms of disbursement. Ministers have no authority over money or contracts. Unless they are permitted by these ones. Unless they, they collude. But the primary responsibility 
or of money is with the permanent secretary. So if you, you cannot talk of corruption in terms of public funds without talking about the permanent secretary. So I was able to explain to those people that if you are, if you are going to talk about corruption, fighting corruption, when the movement came to power, we had a lot of evils. There was extrajudicial killings by soldiers. Soldiers were the ones killing people. Soldiers were looting people's property. Roadblocks and so on. We stopped all these. But we stopped them because we were using uh, soldiers in the NRA. But this problem of embezzlement, of bribes, is a different problem. We could not use soldiers to fight it. We had to use other people. <clears throat> Initially, we gave the chance to these civil servants whom we found here. Now that they appear not to have done their work, we started moving, like in the case of the revenue authority. I recruited almost an entire new group. And you see how well they are performing now. I'm now going to call a conference of the permanent secretaries and tell them that, please, this bad name of corruption, you are the ones responsible. And you must clean it. If you don't clean it, I will clean you. Just like we cleaned the revenue authority. Revenue authority now is moving. Yeah. We are over collecting because of the young people we put there, the, the, new, the, the new group. And some of these outsiders had never heard this line because they are not, never educated by, by the newspapers. They didn't know. They think that the minister is the one who has got power over money, or over contracts, or the president. The president and the ministers have authority over policy, not money. Policy, once, once um, uh, the policies are passed by the cabinet and by uh, parliament, then the one who is in charge of ensuring that the money is spent according to the budget is the permanent secretary. Nobody else. So I'm told you read us that article of the Constitution. In charge of the ministry or department shall be. Therefore, much of the things you have been writing are false. <laughs> 